you may be wondering why you would need a brush motor rebuild. And there may be a few cases. You could have used your motor for a long enough time until the brushes were too short to work properly. Or you may have gotten into some water and ended up contaminating the commutator. As you can see, this one has a little bit of rust on it. So it was definitely in some water damage. Um, or if you get into mud and contaminants get inside the motor, it may not wear it out, but the brushes and the commutator surface will be in such condition that your power will not be there. So if you notice a loss in power, maybe the motor's not starting up properly, or if you've just gotten into mud and need to clean it out, you'll want to rebuild your motor. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm John Holmes, owner of Holmes Hobbies, and today we're going to go over rebuilding a brushed motor. And uh, as you can see here, we have a few examples laid out in front of us, and we're gonna go through the tools that you will need and the types of motors that you will need to rebuild. This type of motor is a non-rebuildable brushed motor, and we will not be covering those here today because you can't rebuild them effectively. So what we are going to show you is the parts of a brushed rebuildable motor, which include the upper and lower hoods, the brush and the spring, as you can see on these two examples, they are rebuildable motors. And to rebuild the motors, you will need a few tools. To loosen them up and take them apart, generally a Phillips head screwdriver will be needed. On some brands of motors and our puller brushed motors, you will need a two millimeter Allen head. And if you would like to take the brush springs, uh, the brush spring posts off, then you will need these little nut drivers. Intigy makes ones that are specifically for taking the brush posts off. And as you can see, it's got good clearance and you can stick them down on the brush posts. But if you don't want to order from Intigy, or if you just want to do something a little different and are in a time constraint, you can go to the hardware store and get a 3 16th inch nut driver but you have to grind them down to give them clearance in between that brush post and the hood. Not too big of a deal if you're handy and you have a grinder or some tools at your house, but uh, just be aware that a 3 16, 3 16 inch driver will not work as standard. So we can use either one. Um, however, today we will not need to take the brush posts off, so we can set this aside. But we will want to have our Phillips head screwdriver, a extra set of brushes because we're rebuilding the motor, and we also use a 22 caliber gun brush and uh, we typically will go for a brass one because it does not scratch the inside of the brush posts yet it still gives a pretty good clean now if your motor was very dirty you would want to take it apart and use a toothbrush and some soapy water to make sure that it's all clean on the inside and then blow it out with some compressed air and re-oil the bearings. However, in this case, since it's a clean motor, we will not need to do that and we'll only disassemble it partially as would typically be done. So today we're going to take apart this Crawlmaster Sport motor and rebuild it as a Crawlmaster Pro motor with a hand-wound armature. These are examples of armatures that need some love and attention. This one is a 10 millimeter com uh, torque master type, and this one is a crawl master type, which is a seven and a half millimeter com. With a seven and a half millimeter com size, your minimum commutator diameter is 6.86 millimeters. And for a 10 millimeter commutator size, the minimum diameter that you would like is 9.14 millimeters. And so before we begin, we would measure these and make sure that there's room for some com cutting. 7.29, that's within spec. We can get a couple cuts out of that. And this one is 9.8 millimeters, also within room of doing a little bit of work to them. Uh, so start off, we're gonna take apart this motor and get to the inside. So we begin by taking the springs off of the motor. And this allows the brushes to move freely and not be jammed against the commutator. Next, we use the Phillips head screwdriver and we loosen these two screws on the case. Just a couple of turns. And this allows the end bell to rotate freely. This is also how you adjust timing on a motor and we will cover that at the end. So you rotate it about 45 degrees off of center and the end bell should slide right off. There we go. Now there's going to be washers on the inside 
and we want to make sure that we locate all of them and also see the position and the shimming of the motor. So we'll take that washer off. There's also this fiber washer and with a 7.5 millimeter comm you must take the fiber washer off before you lathe it because the lathe will hit that and prevent you from getting a good cut. And we'll just go ahead and pull out the entire armature here. There will be a washer on the bottom as well. Don't lose it. And lastly will be our fiber washer. And as you can see, this is a relatively new motor that actually does not need a replacement. However, I'm going to upgrade the armature in this one anyway, and we will just have a better motor for it. Now we're going to cut this commutator down. And to see the cuts in action, I'm just going to mark it with a Sharpie. Make sure that your armature is spinning in the right direction for the cut of your bit. Now advance your lathe just a little bit at a time. One click usually. And take a very thin pass. appears that that was a full depth cut and as you can see the surface is completely clean and mirror like sort of like the back of a CD if any of you are old enough to know what the back of the CD looks like now the next thing that we need to do is inspect the commutator and ensure that there are no loose bits involved and sometimes a hobby knife or small knife is a good tool for the task. So we just run that down each of the segments ensuring that it is nice and clean. And now we are ready to install the new armature. When reassembling the motor we want to make sure that we have the shims in the proper position and on our Torque Master and Crawl Master series of motors it is almost always identical. One chrome washer on the bottom of the armature, the fiber washer first on top of the commutator, and then another chrome washer and brass washer on the commutator side. And this should give us proper spacing inside the motor. So we reinsert our armature into the motor. Make sure that our washers are installed properly. And now we're ready to reinstall the in bell onto the motor. Now in the case of a full rebuild, we would want to clean out inside these brush hoods because that's where most of your conductivity occurs. So a couple good swipes with that brass brush. 22 caliber in both of the hoods. Gets her nice and clean. And if we were going to replace the brushes on this particular motor, we would use a Phillips head screwdriver. Loosen the screws, as you can see, nice and loose. Put our new brushes in through the eyelet hole and then tighten that back down. While the motor is apart, it is also a good idea to make sure that your bearings spin freely and that there's no damage inside the motor. And in this case, I know that the bearings are spinning freely and we can continue with our regular reassembly. So we make sure that we have our spacers on top still one brass, one chrome, and one fiber washer. And then we reinsert the end bell onto the motor. And when you have it aligned right, the little dimples in the timing ring will allow it to slide into the motor 
where the dimples are on the can. Then we rotate for 45 degrees or so, and we are back at zero timing. At this point, we can reinsert our brushes and reinstall our springs. We want to make sure that the brushes are free moving and that the brush shunt, the little wire, is not hanging on anything. Sometimes I like to bend those up just a little bit, get it out of the way. Free moving, brush shunt is not hanging. So now we're ready to time the motor for our rig before we install it because it's easier that way. And to show you which direction the motor is rotating, I'll put this little piece of tape onto the shaft, just for illustration purposes. The system that we're using to test the motor is a TorqueMaster BRXL ESC with a three cell lithium polymer battery and right now we're using a servo tester instead of using a normal radio. But you could use the system that is installed into your rig to ensure that this is spinning in the right direction and is timed properly. So if we give it some forward throttle in this system, you will see a green light on the motor controller. And in reverse, a red light. We want to ensure that when the vehicle is going forwards that the green light is lighting up and that our pinion is spinning in the proper direction for forward rotation of the vehicle. And in many vehicles, this is a counterclockwise rotation when viewing from this side of the motor. So we give it a little forward throttle and it looks like this particular motor is actually spinning backwards. And, uh, so what we would need to do is either rotate the in bell 180 degrees or just swap these two wires. I'm going to rotate the in bell 180 degrees since it's not tightened down all the way. And we can see the timing mark for zero on the end bell and also on the motor can. So this should be a good setting for both forwards and rotation and also reverse rotation. However, for maximum performance and best brush life, we usually recommend between six and 12 degrees of timing. Each mark is 12 degrees of timing on the motor. And so for forward rotation, which we will consider counterclockwise shaft rotation, we will add a slight amount of timing, 12 degrees. As you can see, we're one mark over from the zero point on the end bell, and then we will tighten it back down. You don't have to use too much tension when tightening it back down. These are very small screws, just enough to snug the end bell. If you have issues with your motor getting loose, then you can use a little bit of blue Loctite on these screws inside that timing ring to ensure that it does not come loose during use. Now, our forward throttle should light green on the ESC, and we should see our shaft rotate in the counterclockwise direction. There we go, we're ready to go. And to ensure that we put the timing into the proper direction, we just need to make sure that forward rotation is faster than reverse rotation. And this is always the case. You always want forward rotation to be faster than reverse rotation, unless it's in an application where you need identical performance in forwards and reverse, such as a robotic situation. Um, however, for most RC crawlers and trail rigs, we will want to have a better brush life and slightly better performance. So we will adjust the timing for a little bit of chiming advance. <laughs> And just audibly, we can hear that it is faster in forwards than it is in reverse.
At this point, we're ready to break in the motor. For higher powered motors with hand wound armatures, this is a fairly important part to the last end of the rebuild. However, for machine wound motors, it's not always a very big deal to do this. However, it will give you a little performance boost and sometimes your brushes can last longer if you break them in and seat them properly. And to do this, we just need a little bit of throttle and it sets for about three minutes. And uh, so typically when we're in the shop rebuilding a motor, we will just put it at about three volts or so for three minutes and just let it sit. Uh, some motors you may want to bump it up to 12 volts for about 30 seconds and that will give you a fully seated brush But for the five slots, they're very very easy to break in and so you know, Just give a little bit of throttle about a third of throttle and Let it sit for a while Once your motor is broken in, you want to ensure that it rotates forwards and backwards very freely and without clicking of the brushes. This motor seems to be just right, and so we can now install it into the rig and go along our merry way. So you've determined that you need a motor rebuild. Uh, maybe it's the look of the commutator that is uh, cueing you into it, or the performance of the motor has diminished. One thing that you will need that you may not have is the motor lathe. You can pick these up from Entergy or maybe on eBay, an old racer is liquidating his brush motors and brush motor equipment. Or you can send it into Holmes Hobbies and have us rebuild it for you if you're not really looking to do this over the long term. So that covers the basics of brush motor rebuilding. We took a armature that needed a commutator cut and cut it to a new fine finish reinstalled it into the motor with the shims in the appropriate location so that we did not have any crashing on the bottom side or the top side of the can. And we also ensured that our brushes were of proper length. Uh, generally, we want to see no less than a five millimeter long brush on our own brand lines before replacement. So with those, we reinstalled into the motor and broke it in at three volts for about three minutes or so. And now it's ready to install. We double checked our direction of rotation along with our timing to ensure that we had some faster rotation in the forward direction. And now we know that this motor is ready to go. If you have any further questions, comment or email us through homeshobbies.com or just give us a call at our phone number. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and subscribe to our newsletter on homeshobbies.com to get up-to-date information on new product releases and also tech information. Thanks for tuning in. A few things that you do not want to do for a motor rebuild. It's very important you do not do these. The first thing is to use sandpaper to knock your comm down and get a better surface on it. This will make your commutator out of round and you will immediately burn your brushes or ruin your commutator. We do not recommend this. You can use a pencil eraser to remove any contamination from the commutator without harming the roundness of it. So in a pinch, a pencil eraser can work for cleaning it out. The other thing that we do not recommend is to break your motor in in water. The only time that you should ever attempt this is if you have a sealed can motor and you're in a racing class where you need to eke out the most power as possible. However, when you do this, you must clean the motor out with compressed air and re-oil your bearings or bushings directly afterwards or else the motor will rust. So in general, we do not recommend a water break-in method for any motor. Just to reiterate, do not use sandpaper on your commutator and do not break in your motors in water. Break your motors in dry, wait a little bit longer, and just send it in for a rebuild or get yourself a motor lathe if you need a comm cut.